Hey everyone. Yo. One sec, let me just uh adjust this this desk scroll. All right, there we go. Woo. All right, how's everyone doing today? Loud. I am doing quite well. Me geht's auch gut, danke. Already on uh, coffee count number two. All right. I have no idea what I'm going to do today. As per usual. Hold on. Let me get uh, my headphones going. We should sample that hydraulic sound today. We can most certainly do that. Let's see. I'm gonna mute my laptop. Yeah, I had an early start to the day, so that always feels good. Been up since roughly like 6.30 or so. Gonna try to be waking up more regularly at an early time. It feels good to be productive earlier in the day. Get it out of the way. I'm sure, the audio is coming through. Oh, yeah, it is coming through. Sweet. Anything in particular you guys want to see today? Or here today, for that matter? Do you speak German, Haywire? Uh, yes, I do. I speak Deutsch. Nicht, uh, nicht viel, aber schon ein bisschen. Ich habe für eine Weile in Österreich gelebt. Um, für so sechs Jahre oder so. Deshalb kann ich jetzt uh, ja, so ganz okay Deutsch sprechen. This is a, a ballad with Darth Vader.
You and Virtual Riot should collab. That'd be fun. All right, let's see what we gonna do today. What we gonna do? Um, <laughs> I've been using the stream time to just kind of explore uh, sound banks. It's been pretty fun, to be honest. I don't really flip through sound banks that much, but obviously on stream, I like to try to speed up the writing process a little bit more than usual. So um, it's been kind of fun to do that. Maybe we can find some more cool new patches to, to mess around with. Sick. Do I listen to any Jacob Collier? Absolutely. I love Jacob. Um, I'm trying to remember when I discovered him because it was quite a bit before his, um, debut album came out in my room but what was what was the not it don't mean a thing what was what was it called right i can't remember which video i first discovered him through but yeah he's awesome it's hard for any musician not to respect jacob <laughs> Do I know Fitch? Yes, I have absolutely heard of Fitch before. It's pretty cool. Kind of a nice preset. I like that one. Let's see. I think uh, ratings. That's right. You can like rate stuff. Let's give this a four. Do this next one is about. Oh yeah, yeah. Don't you worry about a thing. That's exactly what it was. That was. Uh, do I know Errol Garner? Yes, absolutely. Not particularly different from the other one. That was pretty cool too, though. Sounds like you could play uh, Stacy's mom on this pretty well. Hold on. Uh. Stacy's mom has got it going on. Stacy's mom has got it going on. Yeah. The good stuff right there. <laughs> anyway, you could get a virtual keyboard on stream of the notes you play. That's actually a really cool idea. I'm not sure how I'd go about doing that, but I will definitely make note of that. Speaking of which, if you guys have ideas for um, emotes, feel free to uh, throw those in the chat because I'm most definitely going to be working on some of that very soon. Ringtone album.
This reminds me a little bit of the uh, the Diablo One theme song. How's that go? Uh. <laughs> no, that's something like that. Sounds pretty similar. <laughs> Do you ever watch any other musician streamers? Uh not really, to be honest. I think I've checked out Protostar briefly before. Um, I know Virtual Ride has done streams before as well. Um, but I don't know. If you guys have recommendations on other musicians to check out, I'll definitely look. Like, not too many... Um, I don't think there are too many producer streamers out there, to be honest. Because I think most of the time it's not really entertaining enough to watch. Um... Might be a little bit too niche, but I don't know. I could be wrong. I've checked out other random like uh, musician streamers, like people that you know take song requests and will jam out on them and that kind of stuff, which is cool. Pretty cool, I like that actually quite a bit. I like that. <clears throat> Maybe I can uh, throw some uh, throw some drums over this patch. Dink around a little bit. What do you guys say? You guys ready to dink? Let's dink it up. Time to dink. Yeah, you're right, it does kind of sound like steel drums mixed with strings. Okay, where are the drums at? I like 110. Hmm, kind of a strange sound selection in this one. Uh, try... But this guy... It's strange how ALC files, like, you know, groups you can obviously just drag, in, drag into a track and they'll replace uh, what's there, but for some, re for some reason with ALC files, you always have to drag it into a new track. Maybe I'm just stupid and don't know how to do it properly, but that seems to be something I've noticed. Okay, let's see. What do we got here? Um, nothing. There we go. Oh yeah, it's a little bit softer. I like that. Huh. Uh. 
Um, <clears throat> let's just get like a little bit of a groove going. I really like that. It's really fun to jam out on. Maybe let's uh record a few riffs. Why am I like struggling to play that all of a sudden? Yeah, that's a, I feel like the rhythmic energy in that is pretty strong. Um, let's see. Maybe we can find some kind of, uh, kind of soft pad for, the, for, for an intro. Um, bowed colors. I never really looked at that category. I feel like the few times I've checked it, I haven't seen anything particularly interesting. Kind of cool. Ooh, it's ominous. I like that actually as maybe like a just like a single hit every uh every few uh every few beats.
on. Let me uh quantize some of this real quick. Playing that very sloppily. Cool to get some like background acoustic strumming or something. Um, acoustic guitar strumming. I wonder, I wonder if I could find something like that in, in Omnisphere. The guitars type acoustic. <laughs> All string bright. Does that kind of works? I don't know. It's certainly fun to jam too. Let's see, get that side chain set up real quick. Um, drum kits, main kit, O one O. Uh, there we go. My manager is texting me. Let's see. I'm gonna grab the dummy from the drum kit. And we should go. Test out the side chain and see. Yo, it sounds. A bit too much. Although it did sound kind of cool, but with that pump as well. Oh, let's switch it back though. A shaker would be kind of nice. Snag a shaker. shaker. I mean, we could just record my voice shaking too. Not gonna sound nearly as cool though. Let's see, oops, uh, shakers. Yeah. Baseline. Um, just like a kind of saturated sine wave, be fine. <laughs> Throw the chicka chicka sample in there. Chica chica. A 
But yeah, that, that uh, acoustic guitar patch is pretty damn cool. Just uh, record that and repeat it. Quantize it. Oh yeah, wait. Let me uh, let me throw a limiter on here as well. Just realize that might be distorting a little bit. I think, um, I feel like it might be more fun to throw this in into session view, jam, jam that way. See if I can try to make that happen. Um, we only have like a few elements going right now, so it should be pretty easy. Um, so main guitar, intro pad, piano, obviously. We got guitar two. Drums, uh, bass, shaker. Okay, let's see. We'll turn this into a loop. Huh. Is there a reason that maybe I can't loop it until it's in session view or something? Huh. Odd. See what is this launch box? Use the select to sh show view the launch box where you can define how a clip will behave when it's launched. Oh, okay. That's odd. Is that just me or is it strange that I can't loop it? Am I just dumb? I don't really know how to use a uh, session view. What? Oh, okay, so I, I have it linked, I guess. Is it not supposed to be linked? I think it's supposed to be linked, right? Also, I'm glad you like the uh, the direction. Clara. Altus Clara. Is that like an, is that an alias? Uh, how did you learn to mix and master your work? Um, it's... <laughs> well, honestly, I kind of wish I went to school for it um, to a certain extent. I mean, I'm completely self-taught when it comes to production. So, I mean, even though I have a lot of experience with uh, music theory and uh, piano performance and that kind of stuff on an academic level, like I never went to school for music production. So that's all self-taught. Um, so everything I do from that perspective, like mixing, mastering, like sound design, that's uh, that's all self-taught. So literally all I've ever done from that perspective is just, you know, train my ear. Um, so, you know, if I'm hearing something that I don't like that's out of place, then I try to make it sound uh, less offensive to my ears. But, yeah, I don't know. Obviously, you got to kind of meet yourself where you're at. Um, I've released many songs with mixes I was not happy with at all. Um, just because it was the best I could do at the time. <laughs> um, speaking of which, there is uh, a track like that coming out this Friday. Uh, no, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with how it turned out. Um, but yeah, I guess at this point I can kind of say that it's, uh, since it's officially being released on Friday, 
Um, there is a, a remix I did for Martin Garrix. He had a new track that came out called uh, Summer Days that he did with uh, Macklemore and uh, Patrick Stump from Fall Out Boy. And um, his team asked me to do a remix for it. And um, since the song was very much up my alley, um, I've just been having a lot of fun. I mean, if you heard like my recent EP and stuff, you know that I've been having fun writing like funky stuff as well, or even more recently, I suppose. Um, and uh, yeah, it was totally up my alley. So I let them know that I'd be happy to do it. And I wrapped it up uh, uh, last week. And it's going to come out on Friday. So I'm pretty, uh, pretty stoked about that. Anyways. All right. So what the hell am I doing wrong here? So let's try main guitar. Boom. So, <laughs> am I an idiot, or why can I not, why am I unable to loop this? Or is it already looping? What is happening? Maybe it's because I have this loop enabled? No, clearly not. Wait, okay, so this is a loop. That doesn't have any. Okay, let's start with the drums. Um, bass and here. Oops. Bass will go there. Shaker here. Intro pads. Okay, cool. So now if I launch these on my APC, will they loop? That is the question. truth and it didn't loop but this did for some reason so odd am I really gonna have to google this select on launch I've just honestly never had an issue with this before I'm quite confused. Let's see. By default, envelopes play and loop along with the clip. Their loops regions are linked. Unlinks to activate independent local loop region. I think that's what I want, right? Oh, I guess I just figured it out. I think. But then, <laughs> why does the MIDI disappear when I do that? That's so weird. Just me, or is that weird? Okay, so clearly I have it here. The hell? Am I going crazy? At what age did I start producing? Uh, I started producing when I was like. Uh, 16, I believe. Maybe a little bit younger. I started in FL Studio. Do I have any good tutorials for Ableton? Um, hmm. I never really looked up Ableton tutorials, to be honest. Um, I've always preferred, like, the DIY route. Um, to figure things out until they... Until you know how they work. Just, I don't know. I just feel like you can teach yourself better most of the time than anyone else can. That's just kind of my opinion on that. Let's see, so this is unlinked. So strange. Oh, is it transposing like where it starts? 
No, it's not. Okay, so it's going to be the length of What the f What is happening? All right, guys. <laughs> I'm calling it quits on session view. This is not working out. Um I'm probably just an idiot, but that's okay. We're just going to jam out an arrangement view. this After that bit, I feel like you could go into something a bit more sparse. I don't think I like this patch quite as much as the other one. Maybe because that one's a bit more rhythmic. Let's see if there are some other uh, cool guitar patches in here. Pretty crazy. I would have killed to have a library like this when I was... Uh, when I was a teen, just like starting off. Flamenco guitar. pretty cool oh that's sick I love it when patches have articulation changes like that Mandolin duo. Interesting patch. Um, let me rate that one real quick. I remember it. Ooh. 
I like that. This one's kind of interesting. Got like a bell attached to it. For this sub, mm, be buck black. Appreciate it. Um, let's see, For some reason that notification didn't show up on Streamlabs. That's odd. Anyways, appreciate it. Oh, it's because it was a resub. Uh, gotcha. Cool. Well, thank you for resubbing. Ooh. Those mandolin patches are pretty cool. Hmm. Also interesting. Yeah, none, of, none of these are like really catching my interest. Vintage guitars. What might this? Like you could write something really dramatic with this. Anyways, what were we doing? We're jamming out on this. this like what was it called electro boy or something but oh, it is electro boy patch is really cool i used this in my song crystal clear um it's like it was a really cool patch <laughs> Thank you. 
Super fun to jam on. I wish there was a way to troll uh, the articulation of this patch a little bit. Interesting. These aren't being used, I think, because the light's off. I'm pretty sure it's only when the light's on. Huh. I, I really haven't looked that in depth into Omnisphere. I have no idea what any of this stuff is. You can create some unison here. Whoa. Crazy. I have literally never tested that out before. Um, ring modulation? I wonder if it just pitches sample, creates like a, a second copy of the sample and just pitches it. It only sounds like it. Pretty dope. I de oh, you can detune it a little bit as well? Very interesting. <laughs> Obviously not intended for something like this. Ooh, granular. <laughs> I don't know. There's so much stuff you can do in this, it's crazy. Mainly just trying to see if there are some like pretty simple articulation controls, but uh, doesn't look like it. Now let's keep browsing through some through some samples. I really like this uh, Electro Boy sound. It's pretty sweet. Um, okay, so let's add another track. See what else we can find. I think I was having fun with the choirs the other day. Does Martin ever read chat? I do. What was I missing? Uh, hold on. I'm trying to find what I what I missed. 
Um, is this Omnisphere 2? I don't think it's Omnisphere 2. Um, could we see bagpipes? Uh, someday. Someday the bagpipes will return. What kind of keyboards we can we can roll through? Oh God! What would you ever use this sound for? That's kind of nice. Kind of a cool little riff. Um, so I'm kind of hearing that as the voice leading, I think.
Um, I'm just gonna make sure that the pedal doesn't continue the uh, sound into this next section. Grab some more coffee. I think I'm just gonna record that and try to mess around with this patch a little bit. Link it to different side chain or a compressor rather. Okay. I don't really know what I'm doing right now, but um, 
Let's see. Envelope two linked to the. What would be the? Let's try the course pitch. Um, on both the oscillators, I just want like some. Uh, like a little bit of a transient. <laughs> Actually, sounds kind of cool. Let's see. Um, I want to throw some additional drums in here. Mm, we only got these so far. Um, even though those are cool. Um, okay, so let's uh, get rid of the shakers. That's kind of what I'm hearing. Um, maybe a big clap. Actually, I think maybe I have a better kit I can throw in here. Okay, let's see. Yeah, now let's increase the side chain a bit. Oh, it doesn't have the input reading. Um, drums. Dummy. There we go. Let's uh, 
Let's record something random. Quantize time. the release a little bit on that. Um, I'm kind of hearing like a plucked synth actually. Let's see. This one we're actually gonna make sure the adjust note is on for end as well. I thought it would sound cool with the guitar at all. Kinda cool. to that uh, lead synth I was using earlier. Did that disappear? I think it did. Getting some NOC vibes. 
What's uh what's NOC? Let's see, I'm going to open that patch again from before. Hey Wire, will the streams be uh, recorded and uploaded to YouTube? I have limited time, so I can't stay for long, but would love to watch the whole stream. Um, the VODs will uh, remain on Twitch for, I think, like 30 days or something like that. Um, I mean, I don't necessarily encourage people to upload the VODs, um, mostly because, I don't know, there's just like a lot of content that I work on on, on stream and stuff, and... Um, I don't want people necessarily to be too familiar with like works and progresses as opposed to like final released versions of tracks and stuff. But um, I don't know. That's just kind of like the nature of, of streaming and that kind of stuff. So, um, uh, so yeah, you can check out the VODs if you'd like. Um, they're they're going to be around for 30 days after the stream. <laughs> that rift I feel like that's cool Okay, let's see. I'm gonna try one more thing and then I'm gonna switch over to a different project. Um, but, see, I just wanna find its lead si No. Although that, maybe that could work. Um, hold on.
like that's kind of a cool riff. Let's record that automation real quick. Automation arm. <laughs> well, this is goofy. All right. Hold on. So I think does that put the automation in the clip. Weird. <laughs> Where's the automation? Um, it's in there somewhere. Okay, so let's quantize this as well. Um, with the end notes. Some of these notes got kind of messed up. You know what? <laughs> now I kind of want to hear it without the uh, without that being automated. Now, hold on. So oh, here we go. Show automation. Oh, it is just in an automation line. I thought it may have recorded it into the the MIDI clip. Um. Okay. Let's. So let's just delete that and see what it sounds like. kind of wrote a bunch of random ideas. <laughs> I don't really know how these are supposed to work together.
hold on. What was happening with this? For some reason, I thought I'd already already fixed this issue with the sustained note. I'm gonna automate cutoff filter. This. Um, I kind of want to hear what it might sound like if this piano gets pitched down at the end. I'm just going to commit it to audio. Kind of unfortunate that the uh, note from before is bleeding into that, but I'm just trying to get a feel for whether this could sound cool at all or not. Yeah. Sometimes you get some interesting results with the different uh, warp modes. Um, so crash might be nice. Oh, I guess we'll just use that for now. I do want to turn off the release on it, though. Oh. There we go. I like this little white noise blip almost. Sometimes it's fun to just throw random stuff on the master. Ooh, don't know why, but it kind of reminds you of Jerry Folk. I will take that as a compliment. I love, uh, I love um, Jerry Folk. He's pretty badass. How do you get that formant-ish haywire lead sound? Um, I kind of had some decent results uh, with a few different. Um, VSTs, like getting that valley effect, but um, the core of this sound, for example, uh, like this lead. Oh, hold on. Let me get rid of that chorus. <laughs> um, really comes down to like the formant filtering, like subtle distortion. I got like the uh, Ableton amp here as well. Um, stuff like, I don't know some subtle EQing can help as well of course um but here I'll, I can show you for example what the sound sounds like without the formant shifting pretty drastic difference so like obviously that makes it um a big part of the sound
Um, so just kind of like fine tuning the range and the way in which the uh, um, like cutoff on the formant shift is moving around and stuff, and like just finding out what vowels you want to use, and you know, like obviously what uh, the range of the sound, like the octave that the sound is going to be in, will determine a lot of that as well, right? Um, and uh, it's nice too because obviously, like here, look at this. Like I have my um, <clears throat> uh, the note source is linked to the formant as well, so. Um, you know, without this, I would only be able to use this sound, I think, within like an octave range or so. Um, but this way, you know, the lower the note is, uh, the lower the, the format is as well, which is pretty cool. Kind of gives it more of a, a natural, I don't know, just like difference. It sounds like there are some articulation changes like there would be with any other instrument. Um, just makes it more complex. Uh, but yeah, so without that, it sounds kind of strange, obviously, and then without, like, let's say the amp, uh... That just kind of gives it, like, some of the high-end grid that you hear. Hey, actually, I just realized, um... If you guys want to, I could, uh, potentially open up, like, project files of songs I've released, um... Now there aren't that many available, uh, but um, you know stuff like you know tracks from my recent two EPs I could easily open up. Um, unfortunately, like a lot of my project files got lost and corrupted, um, but I have a lot of material. Let's say like from Twofold Part Two, I'm pretty sure I have everything still. Um, it might not load properly, but you know I still have that. If you guys ever want to check something out. Um, Anyways, I am going to call it quits on this for now. Um, and I'm going to save this and open up something else that I was working on. So let's see, sketch journal, 6, 12, 2019, save that. Um, let's see. This was something I was working on in stream, I'm pretty sure. I forgot what it sounds like though. With you, I could certainly open up with you. Yeah, with those recent project files, I know they'll open up just fine. Um, by the way, has this stream run, been running uh, okay for you guys? For some reason, I'm looking at it right now uh, on my laptop, and it looks like it's kind of lagging out a little bit. Um, it's not lagging out for you guys, is it? Okay, sweet. That's good to know. There's the formant lead again. Um, yeah, I don't know. Not something I really want to spend time on right now, to be honest. But 
It's not a bad idea. Uh. Thank you for the donation. Yo, thank you very much for the donation. Hey, hey, Wire, it's been a while since I've watched one of your streams. I am glad you are getting back into it. I love your panorama project. Cheers, man. I appreciate it. But yeah, definitely plan on doing this more often. Um, so anyway, sorry. Uh, you guys were saying uh, you might want to check out one of the project files. I mean, I'm down to kind of do that for a little bit and then probably call it quits in the stream. Um, let's see. What do you guys want to check out? I saw, I saw a few people saying like with you. I saw somebody saying, do you, don't you? Um, yeah, let me know. Otherwise, I'll just open up uh, um, a project file of a song that I know I want to make some progress on. Cool. Um, let's just open up with you. Um, okay, so panorama. Chapter one, or no, that's chapter two. You, a final video audio. Oh, wait a minute. I think it's this one. Oh, there's like 30 different versions in there. Yeah, I realized that, Um, I don't know, some people might be interested in kind of like some of the processing or I don't know, who knows, it's just like random stuff from the project. I, I might have to change my uh, my buffer rate so that my computer can handle it. Um, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Um, I am me, I might be able to open that one up too. I just know that, um, yeah, there's just some project files. I've had issues with uh with loading properly um in the past, but we'll see. We shall see. Um okay, so Um so yeah, with uh Pretty much any project I've had uh, in the last year or so, I've I've uh, mentioned this on stream before, but essentially I always have a group at the top um, <clears throat> that's labeled P uh, for performance. Then I have one other group here um, called the composition that essentially holds everything that I'm not performing. Um, so you can see like the intro synth here is what I would be performing live. I can solo that for a sec. This is like a pretty basic patch with like some velocity sensitive uh, um, like mapping happening and just like a lot of like plucking at different uh, uh, degrees based on the velocity um, and uh, yeah. Oh wait, sorry. <laughs> I should probably read the chat more often then that kind of stuff wouldn't happen to me. Um, yeah, here, now you should be able to hear the song. Anyway, so what I was saying before is, um, yeah, with this sound you can hear, like, I'll solo it again. Um, Like all those articulation changes are coming from the velocity mapping. So, um, you know, I can arm it. There's going to be a ton of latency because I have a lot of effects and, and like all my mastering and stuff is in here. But um, you can hear that like at a really low velocity, it sounds clearly very different than at a high velocity. Uh, 
uh, yo, thank you so much for the sub, Qual Qualsiki. Um, appreciate it. Hey, Haywire, how do you handle a CPU when performing live? I have a nice laptop, but I still get latency from a MIDI keyboard to the output. Yep, um, I mean, that's pretty much one of the, uh, like, the bane of my existence, honestly. Like, if there is a way to work around uh, latency when uh, using a... Um, Using a DAW, uh, my life would be much easier. But yeah, I mean, essentially, it comes down to like reducing processing, reducing um, and anything that could potentially tax your computer. Uh, you want to limit it as much as possible. If that means having like, you know, pretty short processing chains. Like, you really don't want to go. Um, the less, the better, obviously. And like, using native stuff from Ableton will often be better um, than uh, than other plugins. It's not always the case. Um, I believe Pro Q2, for example, is more efficient than Pro Q than um, what is it? EQ8 is that what it's called in Ableton? Uh, yeah, and I'm not sure about EQ3, but I know it's more CPU efficient than EQ8. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Just uh, <clears throat> like finding like plugins that don't introduce a lot of latency is big. Like reducing your processing chains, that kind of stuff is super important. Um, but yeah. Hello from Southeast Wisconsin. Cheers, man. Yeah, no, I, uh, um, I just have a lot of family here, so I, I moved back here about uh, a year and a half ago or so. Let's see if this actually works properly. If there's anything in particular you want to check out from this track, let me know. Um, but um, yeah, it's it's not particularly complicated, um, like really not complicated. You know, there's the vocals consist of like this uh, vocoder and this really processed uh, vocal of mine. Where is it? Is it this one? Oh yeah, th that's it. That's that in combination with the vocoder. I really like these, uh, these, um, pop like little breaks in sound that just open up to um like almost like a different world or something like i just think that's so cool um yeah i mean like these these tracks were largely like a pretty big uh experiment in trying to match like performance and production a bit more in my music like this something that's always bothered me is um i don't know like producing a track having like fine-tuning everything getting the uh mix and everything right but then not really having anything to perform is makes it pretty boring um you should go through a whole process in how you make presets and serum um sure i mean uh I'd be happy to do that. I don't think that my sound design is necessarily that unique. Um, I think largely speaking, like the only thing that does stand out, stand out a little bit from a sound design perspective is um, honestly just my, my leads. I find that there aren't many people that really spend much time on, on uh, leads. Uh, and for me, it's natural because like obviously um, I perform them <laughs> a lot. So, uh, so yeah. But um, yeah, is there anything specifically that you guys want to check out in the in the track? You want to see the vocoder? Yeah, sure. Um, so in this track, the vocoder is like more supplemental. Um, but 
yeah, so I have, um, so first of all, for the carrier, I have two patches that I have a macro to switch uh, between them with. Uh, so I have one that's monophonic and one that's polyphonic. So here in the beginning, um, it's just monophonic because it's just the, that melody. With you, with you, you. With you. And then, um, so from there, uh, there's a section where it goes polyphonic for a little bit, right here. With you. And you can see the MIDI for it is polyphonic too. Anyways, um, then here is the processing chain. Um, so there is a macro on the, uh, um, on the mod for the, like the main processing chain. And that just is like, uh, essentially like something a bit louder and more dry. It switches between, uh, something like, yeah, it's meant for the chorus. So it's like bit drier and a bit louder, like no reverb, no delay, no, nothing like that. So that those really big cuts kind of happen very clean. Um, so you notice obviously like in these big breaks at the, at the chorus. Like if there is reverb on, um, the vocals there, it would, uh, make a lot of those hard cuts and hard stops a lot less effective. So. Yeah, kind of like pretty straightforward concept, but at least this way when I'm performing the vocals, I have uh, uh, control over that that aspect too. Um, so, uh, so yeah, anyway, so that's, that's what that macro is there for. Um, but yeah, in terms of the chain, like we have, you know, just a, um, a compressor, like a multiband compressor. We got the, uh, we got the vocoder here. I keep the unvoiced off. I mean, the unvoiced, um, is really awesome in the sense that it can add like the texture of, um, you know, the mod in, but, um, the issue is it, uh, it does so regardless of whether the carrier is active. So, um, the nice thing is when you keep the unvoiced off, you're only going to hear something when the carrier is active. And that's really important when, um, you know, you have sections like this where you want Again, like those big starts and stops, like you want the silent, you want a lot of control over, over the silence so that like all the sounds that are supposed to hit at the right place do and are actually heard, uh, according, like, uh, appropriately. Um, but yeah. And then other than that, and this, I mean, this chain is kind of ridiculous because it's really not ideal for performing at all. Um, ultimately, like I definitely could have done a much better job of making this sound how I wanted with, without as many, um, effects. But, uh, but yeah, you can see here, for example, like the dry white on the reverb is linked to the macro, like I was mentioning earlier, like the delay is linked to the macro as well. Um, you see here, like the, uh, the high end, uh, like output volume is linked to the macro. So those are all things that are being affected, uh, based on whether the track is at the chorus or not. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I just like, like the chain is just kind of like, you know, compressor um, multiband compressor, vocoder, another multiband compressor. They're super valuable when it comes to taming vocoder sounds because yeah, vocoders can often have all these crazy like resonant peaks and stuff that you don't want. Um, and, uh, you know, Pro and B just to, <laughs> uh, you know, a third multiband compressor. Uh, and, um, then yeah, another EQ at the end, but yeah, it's just super important to, to tame that sound as much as possible because it, it will sound really bad if it's not uh, EQ'd and compressed properly. Um, anyways, just went down a bit of a rant there. So let's see. Um, I don't know if there's anything else in particular that you guys have interest in checking out. I mean, I can look at the, the bass sound design as well. Um, for the vocal, uh, the other vocal processing, you can see there's just kind of like this, uh, like a bit crusher, multi-band compression, um, EQing. Uh, I, th I have serum effects on there for some reason. I wonder what that's doing. Um, but, 
but yeah like for the i don't think the bases are particularly great i mean we, i can certainly solo those what's this oh that's just some white noise so that's like a really distorted uh silence patch that i made um kind of cool i just have enjoyed the uh uh, the quality of like the distortion and silence quite a bit in the past like obviously camel fat is helping out there as well You can see it there even though it's uh, frozen um, And then I think this is the sub Yeah, so if I put those together and Then there's this layer. What is this? Okay, that just adds a little bit of additional high-end grit Yeah, and then there's like <clears throat> this little luck here. Also not really anything special. Um, I do have like a little bit of a uh, reverb tail that I reversed um, of that sound that goes into it. So if you hear, if you listen to it here, I soloed it. Um, but it just kind of like foreshadows like the texture and the quality of that sound a little bit. You hear it kind of creeping in. <laughs> and that sound, I'm pretty sure, is Ray Blaster. Kind of a strange one. Is it this thing right here? Yeah. <laughs> really... Uh, not something you'd think to use, I feel like, uh, but uh, it's more of a peripheral sound anyways, not really anything very important. Um, but yeah, anyways, so that's, uh, that's with you. Um, hopefully, hopefully that was kind of interesting for you guys to check out. Um, but yeah, um, I'm more than happy to do that kind of stuff more often if you guys have interest. Um, yeah, I don't know if there's anything else to really go over in here. I think everything's been kind of explained. But, um, uh, yeah, I, I guess another thing that I've already explained before that I find pretty valuable is, like, consolidating. So, like, for me, for example, to have the majority of my drum sounds in a single track is pretty badass. Um, and, uh, I don't know, I just find, like, you really want to be scrolling around that much just to find like a specific sound you know i mean um like when you th when you listen to a song and you hear drums I, I think like you think of them as like a single entity or at least i do you know i think of like percussion as um like uh yeah just like a, a group and so like I, f I find it super helpful to have the majority of your percussion in a single track and so um i don't know just simplifying your workflow uh can can help obviously um but yeah i'm not an expert at all i think like in an ideal case scenario i would i would be much more organized than i am right now um these are just kind of like some of the methods i've learned to test and have kind of like temporarily worked out for me pretty well but i don't know definitely not going to pretend like i have all the answers that's for sure um but yeah anyways guys uh, I think I'm going to call it quits there. But thank you guys so much for, uh, for tuning in today. Um, next time, let's see, on Friday, I'll be uh, streaming again from 12 to 2 p.m. CST. Uh, if you guys uh, want to do, you know, feedback sessions again, like if you have any tracks you want to show me, we could do that. Um, otherwise, uh, I could also go through um another project file at some point as well um keep working on uh like new music that i'm developing that kind of stuff but um but yeah we'll see what happens uh 
anyways thank you guys for for hanging out for a little bit thank you to the new subscribers um and uh the current ones as well um but yeah appreciate you guys tuning in and until next time cheers guys later